Hey, it's Joel. This is Ben. Hey, dude. Go on. Good to see you, dude. Uh, it's Boy in Space. You know him, the, one of the, the most popular uh, TikTokers. And you've got, this is a tiny maker, right? It's a tiny maker. How did this actually get to you? It was just under two years of uh, backing it on Kickstarter. I was very surprised when it showed up because I didn't get any email. Took it out of the box, got ready to use it, and started printing some tiny things. You, uh, you, you spilled some resin, I hear. Yeah, it was unfortunately because of one of the bottles that they include to fill the vat, because obviously it's very hard to manage how much resin you would put in. Sure, because it's a tiny vat. And while I was filming, I turned it and didn't realize I undid this part. Oh, anyway. I see. Well, this is sad, because it took two years to get to you. It's been 84 years. I do have to say Tiny Maker did reach out and they did say that they could send me a new housing, but that wasn't very fun. No, that's not fun at all. And apparently you had access to the step files, right? Yep. They have step files are out there and me and my friend Plastic 3D spent a long night trying to do something that I think is going to look really good. I can't wait to show you what we did for this on the Mamaki 3D printer. First, we do need to tear down that Tiny Maker and of course your 3D Printing Nerd Studios Proudly powered by PCB Way, 8% off, link in the description, you know what to do. Right, Put the that there. I honestly don't know much about this, but we're just gonna dive in. I believe that it should be fairly simple. I'm thinking we might have to uh, do a little. Really? Oh, cause it cured together? I think so. <laughs> Oh. oh, oh, we got some separation. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so we got this that was plugged into the bottom there. It's got like um, a Nintendo cartridge yeah. kind of receiver. Yeah. I would probably think that not a ton of people actually have done this, no. right? And if we look, those are the LEDs right there that are the light source. Oh, wow. It's just two of them. It's just two of them. Yeah. Huh. Tiny maker. All right. Well, so, will the bottom come off? Kind of. Yep. Okay. There is two screws, so we need to actually just separate this front panel. You know, I usually use a torch for stuff like this, but... Did you want a torch? No, that'd be a bad idea for sure. It's starting to come out at the spot. Oh, Ooh. the piece is all there. Yeah, you can definitely see all the <laughs> resin. I think these buttons probably come out. Ah, uh, okay. And we'll probably put these in the ultrasonic cleaner just because they're probably still a little bit sticky. So we've almost got everything out of there. Ben's just doing the last two Phillips screws that were on the front panel which yep. we're kind of holding it in place. Look at that. Look at how green it is. <laughs> yeah. The resin really got everywhere. They have step files are out there and me and my friend Plastic 3D spent a long night trying to do something that I think is gonna look really good. Well, and you, you asked me too, you were like, hey, can we recreate something? And I mm -hmm. was like, I think we can. It's the old school purple Game Boy. It's the one with the semi-translucent purple case. And Ben thought it'd be a great idea if we could use a 3D printing technology to recreate this in translucent purple. Yeah, and in a unique way. So here's how it's gonna go. I have the model, I have printed it. Ben hasn't seen it fully yet. So let me go get the model and you're gonna get a chance to clean it. It's gonna be amazing. This is exciting. Usually I'm the one that gets to clean these models off the Mimaki, but now Ben is gonna get some industrial experience. So first of all, you need some rubber gloves. For sure. Yeah, well, we've got nitrile gloves. Let's see if they fit, like a glove. Next is gonna be the print. Now we've, we've talked about the print. The Mimaki uses a support material, a water soluble support material all around the model. Now you can dissolve it, but you can also pick the big chunks of support off because that way you don't get as much in the water, right? Next, you need a way to get this off the plate. Uh, the best thing to do is this sharp blade. So we just kind of tap it on the side, just like that. Okay, it's, go ahead and pick it up. You have gloves. Weird. It's kind of weird, right? What are your, what's your first impression of a model that's been printed on the Mimaki? It's a little bit more heavy. Than yeah, yeah. Um, kind of interesting. It kind of reminds me of like beeswax. A little bit. The process of removing the larger chunks is usually done with a kebab stick because it's sharp but it's wood, and so the wood isn't necessarily gonna mar the surface like a steel pick would. We'll get this cleaned up, 
we'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then we'll pull out something that is dry, done, and fantastic. All right, we got a couple things now. So this is the one that Ben was cleaning, I helped with, and that's after it has been cleaned in the ultrasonic and dried. So it does absorb a little bit of moisture from the water, and then you just let it sit on a paper towel and dry. This was a test piece I did. So when Ben originally sent the file, I just took a guess at a color that was close, took a, a gander at that. So I made that one, which also looks kind of cool. Really good, yeah. Uh, these turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm really happy with them. Very pleased with it, actually. This one is the um, the, the Game Boy semi-translucent purple. And when shining a light through it, you really get that purple essence. This one, though, reminded you of what? A Jolly Rancher. A Jolly Rancher. A Jolly Rancher. Dude, Don't I love it, this. Don't eat it, though. Do no. not eat it. So we're going to take the screen and set it into here first. This bottom motherboard piece. Slot it in. And obviously proceed with a bit of caution. Look no at that. way. That... It's very, very close. Look at that fitment. Nice. Okay, so then I just need to do the two screws that are in the front here. And I'm working on the I'm working on the buttons. All right, so with those two screws in, I can now connect the ribbon cable back to the front screen. Got you it. got it. Look at that, you got it, dude. I did do something that was smart when I first got this, is I didn't peel off the protective layer. Ooh. Well, first of all, let's take a moment. Like, we did this. Like, this yeah. worked. And obviously, like I said, we we might have had the step files, but we didn't really have any other stuff to base this off of, so we proceeded with caution. Yeah. And it actually went together. And it paid off. And the craziest part is the fact that uh, this is the step file, but we actually modified the outside without damaging any of the other parts of the models that need to be precise. That's right. Which is very cool. All right. We could go for a test print. And since the vat is so small, almost every print, you have to set an alarm and then come and top up the vat. Really? Yes. Hey, it's the next day. Ben and I have changed clothes. The print is done and it looks complete. It looks really good. What is it? Uh, it's a... Uh... I actually don't know. <laughs> it was a test file. Okay, cool. Test file completed. But now that we're here, there's a few different things that we kind of want to change, right? I know you said that you wanted to try the pink one. Just to see what it looks like, right? Because the pink one is a little bit more transparent. A little bit. Just right. a little bit. But also, I realized when I had the pink one out earlier today, I was like, you know what? I could hit this with a little bit more of that 2K clear. And I did. And it looks clear. Much clearer. Like, much clearer. So then, here's what we're going to do. Ben is going to attempt to disassemble and reassemble using the pink, but also, we may customize the buttons too. I think we have to. We'll reach its final form. Pink. What do you think? Uh, so do you like the pink better? With the buttons that we did, I think it ties it all together. Yeah, and having the Yuffie make is cool to be able to customize things like that, right? Yeah, and personally, I think the other one was really awesome, but I think the pink contrasts good with like the orange and the blue a little bit better in my opinion. Uh, well, you know, the other one, I did I did run it with some 2K clear. It's not fully dry. It's yeah. still out there, but it could be now that that has the right amount of clear on it, maybe we would think different of it. Yeah, and I mean, who knows? After this video is over, I might swap it back just to yeah, try it. Yeah, you never right? know. Well, whatever one you don't use, we'll find someone to give it to. We know others with the Tiny Maker. We can obviously get that to them. Brilliantly done, dude. Like, this I love was it. fun. And the fact that the original intent was just to fix this, <laughs> yeah. right? And now it's like, I almost don't know if I want to use it anymore. Because well, it, it looks like it's like one of those things you'd want on your shelf. That belongs in a museum. Well, hey, listen, this was fun. Ben, I want you to reach out to the audience right there and let them know where they can go to find out more about you and It's Boy in Space. It's Boy in Space on every platform, or you can just... Look for my name, Ben Pendergast. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on this journey of making and discovery. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for gosh you believe in, and customize all the things. And as always, high five. five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting too good at those. <laughs>